So this is an Excel Unit 1 paper. This is question 6. Uh, you can see straight away this is to do with what you know about projectiles, where you need to keep vertical and horizontal motion very separate while you work. The photograph below shows a sequence of pictures of a man jumping 30 metres from a cliff. So we've got some useful information there. That's displacement in the Y dimension. Um, ignore the first picture and consider the second as representing the instant he jumps. And ignore the final picture and avoid the splash. Don't try and measure the splash. Taking the tenth picture is shown the time which he's fallen 30 metres. Okay, so if we're ignoring the, the first picture, means this is zero here, but the tenth picture here, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, this one is zero. This one is um, at 30 metres, so if you think about that, this is the point at which 30 metres is, and this is zero metres. So that is where you're going to get your time from. And that's where I think this, this explanation is pretty confusing, really, but you just need to get that straight in your head. The first part has actually got nothing to do with that. The first part just asks you, um, the diagram shows the 10th picture of the man. It's useful to mark the center of gravity for the man for each picture before taking measurements to analyze the motion. So this is just about an accurate technique to use a photograph like that. State what's meant by the center of gravity, and I'm going to underline gravity again, or highlight gravity again, and mark its appropriate position on the diagram. So what is meant by the center of gravity? It's the point at which all of the weight can be thought to act. And I think it's important you get that can be thought or can be assumed. It's not where all the weight is, but it's where the weight we can consider the weight is going to act from a certain point of this. And you could you can't actually just cut that out and hang it from three different points, or you can't, it's not symmetrical, so you can't join the line of symmetry. You just gotta kind of guess that it's gonna be somewhere within the guy's torso. So you're just looking really for somewhere around the center of this guy's. I normally think about for humans, it's gonna be somewhere just above their belly button maybe. Okay, that's the first one. So this next one is asking you um, really just to discuss what we do with projectile motion. This is quite a simple question really, but you've got to kind of re recognize that. The vertical distance between the consecutive, consecutive pictures increases, but the horizontal distance remains the same explain this observation. So there's two marks, meaning firstly, explain the, why the vertical distance increases, and the second, why the horizontal stays the same. So for vertical, <coughs> is accelerating under gravity. But in the horizontal, there is no acceleration. So of course, I hope you realize the time between each photo stays the same. So if the vertical distance increases for the same time, it means it's speeding up. Horizontal distance remains the same. So. What we always talk about when we're doing projectiles is you can ignore air resistance in the horizontal dimension. So that is why it is. Yes, there would be some air resistance in the horizontal dimension, but for the sake of our calculations, we just ignore it. It is going to be very small compared to the acceleration of gravity, so we could say it's negligible. So... By considering the vertical motion for pictures 2 to 10, show the pictures are taken at a rate of about 3 per second. So the, height, the vertical height form is 30 metres. You might think by this point, well, I need to actually go ahead and go and, me and measure out the distances on that photo. Uh, no, that's probably coming, but um, not at this point. Actually, you can just, if you figure out the information that you've got and the information you know already, then you can actually um, use an equation of motion in this picture here. So this is displacement. 
you know G you know as well that U initial speed in the Y dimension is zero so actually now you can go to your equations of motion and you can find a suitable one and your target is time you've got to show the take pictures are taken at a rate so you've got to show the time the total time first and then you, you know you've got eight pictures so you just work it out like that so um, the equation of motion that works is s equals ut plus a half a t squared where you know that ut is zero because u is zero so s equals a half g because that's uh, acceleration in this case t squared rearrange for time so 2s over g and rooted is time input all the numbers uh, 2 times 30 divided by 9.81 and root do that in the calculator and you should find that that is 2 point for seven seconds but that is for eight seconds so eight divided by 2.47 gives me pictures per second which comes out at around three seconds or three sorry 3.2 pictures so you're told again that the vertical height is 30 meters take measurements from the photograph and use them to show the horizontal distance between these pictures between 12 and 15 meters record your measurements below so here's the point where you actually need to go back and use the picture I can't really do much on the screen with this but um, the idea is that you use the information you're given vertical height between 2 and 10 is 30 so you'd measure that with your ruler try and do it vertically I'd use a set square if I had one with me um, and that if it's print a4 comes out around about 10 centimeters so you know that one centimeter is worth three meters and then you can take any or a few of these horizontal distances and hopefully you can see they're about the same for each one measure them multiply them in your ratio and you should come out with something around well <laughs> something between 12 and 15 what we're expecting is somewhere between 12.4 to um, 14.1 is the acceptable kind of region here but you'd get uh, one mark for actually having measured the vertical distance um, and the horizontal difference accurately in centimeters and then one mark for doing a scale so times basically three meters is your scale conversion a lot I've kind of figured out on the screen but whatever was the scale conversion you'd found out on your paper and then for actually getting this accurate within this range here so I think this is um, confusingly worded occasionally this question is kind of like well you have spent all that time practicing your um, projectiles comfortable with them the way they are and suddenly you're asked a question in kind of the opposite way around and you're asked to get information from the picture and not from the picture and um, so you know you're normally used to working out time from how long it's been in the air and you're told time straight away here so this is it's no harder than some of the other questions but it's just a, a bit of a um, different way of thinking about it so be resilient take your time think well how can I apply what I do know to this so here you've got to calculate the horizontal velocity and the vertical velocity of the man for the tenth picture um, now that's the clue as to where the four marks are horizontal and vertical 
Okay, this is all just really applying speed, distance, and time. So things that you're kind of familiar with anyway. So firstly, um, for this one, let's do horizontal first because that's the easy one. Uh, obviously, velocity is displacement over time. Or well, what's his horizontal displacement? We measured that in the last one. The total horizontal displacement for the whole um, thing was about in the middle of this range here. So about 13 meters, that's S. And we've got time for the whole um, trip from our part C, where we measured time to be in the region of about five, about 2.5, sorry. So that's a really easy question, isn't it? 13 by 2.5 gives us 13 divided by 2.5 gives us 5.2, which is acceptable. Okay, now what about the vertical? Well, actually, um, I'm pretty sure what I would have done if I was given that picture as I go and I'd measure the vertical distance between the ninth and the tenth picture and I'd do the time for one picture, which would be 1 over um, 3.2 uh, from the last one. But actually, what they're after here is you just using your SUVAT. So in the equation that works here, V equals U plus AT because we know that u is zero, is just 9.81 times by the time for the whole journey, 2.5, which comes out at 2.45 meters per second. So not really a lot of difficult thinking you have to do there, but it's just a projectiles question, but which doesn't seem like the, the, the kind of majority of projectiles questions do. So I can understand how you get a bit confused. You've got to get yourself unconfused. You've got to relax, think, well, I can do this. I do understand motion. What, how can I pick up all these marks?